Aloha everyone. On May 27th, 2018, well after the onset of the May 3rd, 2018 Kilauea volcano eruption here on the Big Island of Hawaii, the USGS started using SUAS vehicles, also known as drones, to monitor and provide situational awareness of the eruption occurring in the Lower East Drift Zone. These drones captured some unbelievable visual displays that I will show you using my new 2018 Kilauea Eruption Video Sandbox. This first episode in the series will cover the period from May 3rd to May 26th, 2018, which was before the USGS started using the drones to survey the erupting fissures and lava flows. This episode aims to help strengthen your visual orientation of the Lower Easter Zone and recap the first few weeks of this unique eruption. Utilizing the ground footage I have available to me, we will begin revisiting this volcanic eruption in a way never done before. On May 2nd, 2018, at the lower end of Kahukai Street in Leilani Estates, now known as the Kahukai Kipuka, Cracks were discovered running across the street and into the yards on either side. Little did we realize at this time, this was visual evidence of magma pushing up from below. Interestingly, these two cracks didn't really change much throughout the eruption. However, to my surprise, while I was building the sandbox, I did notice that these two cracks can still be seen in the post-2018 aerial images and still appear to not have changed very much. Now, within less than 24 hours after these cracks appeared, on May 3rd, literally around the corner on Mohala Street, just up rift from the Kahukai road cracks, the first fissure opened and began erupting lava. This fissure was named and designated as Fissure 1 the first in a total of 24 fissures that was to become the 2018 Kilauea Volcano Eruption. Over the next 24 hours, moving into May 4th by 8 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, two more fissures had opened in the Leilani Estates subdivision. Fissure 2 was located over on Makamai Street, just south of Leilani Avenue, with Fissure 3 opening up on Kaupili Street between Fissure 1 and Fissure 2, if you draw a line between these three fissures and continue with both up and down the rift, for the most part, it would line up with the other 21 fissures that will emerge as we move progressively forward in time. By 10 a.m. on May 5th, another four fissures had been identified, bringing the current total to seven. However, it should be noted that the official map by the USGS for May 5th shows the addition of Fissure 8 down on Lower Kahukai by Fissure 5. However, that has to be an error. We all know where Fissure 8 is by now, and if you don't, you will, for sure, by the end of this video series. When Fissure 1 was investigated that morning of May 5th, it was revealed that between it and Fissure 4, they had apparently covered and closed Mohala Street with an a uh -uh lava flow, but had gone inactive. However, things were entirely different at Makamai and Leilani Avenue with Fissure 2 and Fissure 7. We are now walking southward on Makamai, and just up across Leilani Avenue, you can see Fissure 2 erupting. The sound you hear is caused by the pressurized lava and magmatic gases escaping through the fissure cracks in the ground. You can also see cracks across the road surface in the video. Looking to your left and across Leilani Avenue, you see Fissure 7 going off behind all the trees and bushes. Watching straight down Makamai on the right side of the road, the fire causes a power transformer canister to explode, sending down a shower of fire. One more thing you can see in this video clip is there seems to be a convergence of eruptive activity between Fissure 2 and Fissure 7. If you look behind the trees, you can see the eruptive lava line between Fissures 2 and 7. Later on, as we progress down the timeline, you will get to observe this fissure line eruptive activity without obstruction. Moving over to Luana Street and Leilani Avenue, it is time for you to witness the birth of what would later become the main focus and predominant feature of the 2018 Kilauea Lower East Rift Zone eruption. 
Sometime before 3.30 a.m. on the morning of May 6, Fissure 8 was born. We are walking southward down Luana Street towards the newest fissure that has opened and begun to erupt. This is Fissure 8 during its first eruptive period and compared to what it will become in the future, it is just a baby. This eruptive period of Fissure 8 didn't last very long and became stalled in a short time. However, this is not the end of the story for Fissure 8, as you will see later in this revisiting. If you look down the left side of what is, or perhaps I should say was, the side of the road, you can clearly see the lava fountain produced by Fissure 8 in the back and to the left. What you see here is a wall of a'a -a lava. This lava spreads out from the fissure opening as the magma exits, in this case producing a lava fountain. This a'a -a lava is usually cooler, chunkier, and generally a rocky lava that moves more slowly. However, moving into the daylight hours of the day, we discover fissure 8 was not the only one to have opened overnight. By 6 a.m. on May 6, it was official. Fissure 8 plus two other fissures had opened. They were labeled fissures 9 and 10, but they had only spewed a small amount of lava. Around 7 a.m., I learned that one of the other two fissures, Fissure 9, had opened on Capono Street, south of Leilani Avenue. Not only had this fissure produced enough lava to close Capono between Leilani Avenue and Malama Street, but it had also taken the home of someone that I have known since I moved to the Big Island of Hawaii. We are now looking south down Kapono Street with Malama Street in front of us and Leilani Avenue behind us. The primary volcanic vent for Fissure 9 is off to the right behind those trees. There is also a smaller vent just off the left side of the road behind those palms. You really can't see in this video clip, but Fissure 9 ultimately covered around 410 feet or 125 meter stretch of Kapono Street with a, a lava. Now, less than an hour later, back over on Makamae Street, things were still active as Fissure 8 continued to erupt a, a lava that slowly spread out over the area. With the leading edge of the flow, reaching well north of Leilani Avenue on Makamae Street. What we see here in this video clip is a perfect example of what an a, a lava flow looks like. It is a crumbly and rocky type of lava that rolls over itself as it flows forward. When the a, a lava was tested, it was discovered that it chemically matched lava from the 1955 Lower East Rift Zone eruption suggesting that the a, a lava that was currently erupting is from the 1955 leftovers stored under Leilani Estates and is being ejected by the mounting pressure of the magma moving down the East Rift Zone from the summit. Moving on, by 11.30 a.m. on May 7th, there was two new fissures added to the list, fissures 11 and 12. However, I am sure you have noticed already that fissures 10, 11, and 12 are not within the bounds of the sandbox. I elected to exclude them since they didn't produce any significant eruption of lava and I have no photos or video footage of them either. Not including these two columns of map tiles also helps reduce the demand for my already stressed hardware resources, so I believe it was the right choice to do so. Now, by the 7 p.m. update, from the USGS on May 8th, there were another two fissures, 13 and 14, added to the list. However, the activity at these two fissure sites mainly seemed to be gas and steam with a limited lava eruption. Progressing into the early morning hours of May 9th over by Fissure 5, part of the fissure crack began to exhibit a pulsing spew of gas and flames as if someone was squeezing on a bellow, as you would see in the forge of a blacksmith. It should also be noted that we will see a similar pulsing like this later as the eruption continues to unfold. On a side note, I find myself completely mesmerized by this video clip. What about you? Let me know in the comments below. Once the USGS posted the 5.30 p.m. May 9th update, 
The count had risen and was now at a total of 15 fissures. It would also seem that fissure 15 was the only erupting vent at this time and it was at a minimum as well. This lull in activity appeared as if the eruption might be ending, which was a question people began to ask. Nonetheless, it definitely allowed us to take a deep breath, step back, and relax just for a minute, if not more. The diminished activity also provided an opportunity to explore some areas that had been inaccessible due to the previous eruptive activity. Like in this video clip from May 10th, 2018, we are on the south side of the Kaupili lava flow facing north. Fissure 14 is on the left or west side of the road, while Fissure 3 is on the right or east side. I am not very sure which one this particular Aa lava has erupted from, but at this point, it doesn't alter the substance of any of this very much at all. Please be sure to join me in the next episode of revisiting the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Make sure you don't miss anything by clicking the subscribe button and ringing that bell for notifications. Finally, help me show that YouTube algorithm who's boss. Click the like button and comment below. I love reading your comments and you never know, I might just reply. Mahalo for watching and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening.